Hello and welcome to BusyWorksBeats.com. Today I'm going to show you guys three easy steps to enhance your melodies. So subscribe if you're new, smash that like button to add more energy to this video. So firstly, it's understanding half steps. Let me show you guys something we can play. We could do. So we can go out of key on purpose. Okay, so let's do. We're going to start here at D. Okay, then we're gonna use a half step below. Okay, this will help the rotation of notes. So most people wanna stay in the key all the time. You don't have to stay in key. We can go outside of the scale to create tension here. All right, so what we did was we went out of key on purpose using this half step. Half steps usually want to go back to where they came from. So if we went down a half step, we want to go back up. If we went up a half step, meaning one note away, we want to go back down. Okay, so that's the first understanding is allowing yourself to go out of key. Most people just kind of stay in key and scale. And they wonder why the melody sounds stiff and not like soulful. Okay, so that's half of it. Next thing is understanding perfect fifths. So perfect fifths, is, the concept of a perfect fifth is when you go seven notes away from whatever note you're at. So D, let's count up seven notes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're at A. So that's the perfect fifth. So technically we're going from what's called the tonic or the root note down to the perfect fifth. Okay, and that's what creates this kind of cohesiveness, cohesion. Okay, so let's like use it in a different way. So the question is, do we use the same notes? Like, how do we know where to go to from here? And here's where we have to understand intervallic resolution. I teach this in my course called Music Theory Magic at BusyWorksBeats.com slash Music Theory Magic. But basically, you're going to go from a root note to the perfect fifth and then down either seven or to the fifth of the fifth. OK, so in this case, E is seven notes away from A. So it's D count up seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then from A to E is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven notes. And this is how we can create this infinite loop of melody. Now the next kind of bonus lesson here, this is my plugin at busyworksbeats.com slash Hercules. What we're going to do is add a contrast layer. In short, melody comes in four layers. You have what's called the top line section. We have the harmony section. We have the contrast section, which is like bass counter melody. And then we have the rhythm section. Okay, so now let's harmonize. I'm trying not to teach you guys everything in one video to take too long. So we're going to harmonize. We're going to add more notes underneath the melody. To fill in this area. And now we're going to take these bottom notes and add in a bass. So let's use a different instrument. So this is a technique used in jazz a lot. Basically, they'll do chord extensions in the bass. So let's pick a nice bass. So my favorite ones are SO. I think I have them marked here. Yeah. Let's use this one. That's a nice one. So what we'll do is we'll take the root note and we will copy this. So let's go to we're at D. Let's add this into the bass. Let's go down an octave. Now, if you wanted to get fancy, what we could do is make this longer here. And instead of using the root note in the bass, we could use a chord extension. This is, again, going into a lot of theory that I don't have time to really explain in two seconds here, but it's D, F, A creates what's called a triad. This is a three note chord. Then we have the note C that will make this D minor seventh. And then we have E, which make this D minor ninth. So in short, we're really playing a minor ninth chord uh, with all these notes. So really, these notes are from a chord. OK, and what we could do with the bass is we could either play the root note, the fifth, which is A, or we could do the fifth of the fifth, which is E, you know, any kind of combination. Or we can go down a notch and say, how would we expand this chord? We would go down four notes, one, two, three, four to uh, B flat. And we could play that note in the bass. Just an option, not mandatory, though. And 
and that's why it creates this expansive sound when we switch up the notes so that's why we're going to these notes is because we're actually creating a chord extension by going from d to b flat it makes it an 11th chord in that case when we combine the piano notes with the bass And let's say we want to resolve this bass, we could do the same thing, resolve it down seven. Now we're pretty low in the octave, so you guys got to use your ears here. Alright guys, let's play this twice through. So music theory has a lot of applications. We only went into like half of the things we could do, but I'm not trying to make this video two hours long. Subscribe if you're new. And thank you guys for watching. It's Game from BusyWorksBeats.com. If you guys want to learn more music theory, go to BusyWorksBeats.com slash Music Theory Essentials. That's my core fundamental teaching on music theory. If you guys want to take it up a notch, you want to go to the intermediate level. Look up Music Theory Magic. Go to BusyWorksBeats.com slash Music Theory Magic. Okay, that's going to take you to the next level if you already have Music Theory Essentials. All right, guys, subscribe for your new piece.